Hello, it's Martin, the sun has set and I'm here with my ID3, which can only mean one thing and that's a headlights test. My particular car is the family trim, which means it features the upgraded matrix LED headlights. And let me tell you, if you don't know what that means, the automotive lighting technology has come a long way in the last decade or so and it's really, really impressive. So I would recommend you to stick around. And if you do know what it means, don't worry, this video will be divided into chapters so you can skip along to the bits which interest you the most about how this particular system works in practice and at the end we will conclude whether it's worth seeking out examples which do have these upgraded headlights. For the sake of completeness, let me say that even the base level ID3s get LED headlights but they utilize a reflector design and don't feature front foot lights at all. Hence, there is no matrix functionality but auto switching between high and dipped beam when traffic is detected is available. However, double check the fine print on this. As VW offers it as a subscription slash one time purchase you need to unlock through the online store in many markets. The rear clusters are LED as well, but less sophisticated in design than the ones on the higher trim levels. These IQ lights are on another level though. This is just the side light, which also doubles as the daytime running light. Importantly, they feature projector technology and the projector itself literally looks and moves like a pupil within an eye. And if I turn the vehicle on to wake up the dipped beam as well, you will see that we also get a fantastic light bar connecting both of the headlights. Unfortunately, no illuminated VW badge here in Europe. And probably the most important feature is the fact that behind the scenes, each of these clusters consists of 18 LEDs, 11 of which can be individually controlled for the matrix functionality. The trim levels which include these IQ lights have changed over the years and are market specific, but in the UK pretty much anything but the base life models come with them bundled in. You don't need to look through the spec sheet though, there is a very easy way of spotting the differences visually. On the outside the IQ lights feature the aforementioned projectors, whereas the basic lights utilize reflectors with a much less intricate design. And on the inside, only cars with the IQ lights have a dedicated front poor weather light button on the touch control panel on the dashboard. That's all the theory covered, now let's see how these IQ lights work in practice, starting at low speeds in this residential area. This upgraded light package includes fog lights within the main headlight cluster, which also double as cornering lights. So for example, in sharp bends like these, if I turn right, the corners are better illuminated. No radically new stuff here, manufacturers have been doing similar things for a while. However, what is cleverly implemented is that if I go into reverse in these low light conditions to help with maneuvering, both of those cornering lights come on to properly illuminate the immediate surroundings. Increasing the speed a little bit, but still only using the low beams. The next feature to explore is the dynamic curve light. This means that as I turn the steering wheel, the projectors within the headlights actually physically move and the throw of the headlights changes accordingly. As the name suggests, it's very useful on, for example, country roads, where you can see further ahead into the bend. Important to mention, this works purely based on the steering angle or the steering input, not based on GPS data. Hopefully you will see it very clearly as we are coming into this roundabout. You see as I turn the steering wheel, the lights nicely illuminate the area I'm about to go through. It's important to mention this only works when the lights are in full automatic mode. So for example, if I touch the mode selector here and go into forced dipped beam, if I apply any steering input, you will now see the difference that the lights are staying fixed to the kind of forward axis of the vehicle. So I will just switch back into automatic because that's what we will need for the next feature which is the actual matrix functionality. Because if I push the left stalk, which is the light stalk away from me, you will see an automatic high beams symbol will illuminate in the instrument panel. That means that the car is now automatically regulating the high beam and given we are in auto mode and this car is equipped with the matrix lights, it can activate sections of the beam like it's doing right now, for example, on the right without dazzling other drivers. And this is a good example of how it performs on the motorway, actually. 
Some adaptive high beam systems struggle with detecting lorries in the oncoming lane, especially if there is a concrete central divider like in this case, because obviously the camera which is mounted in the windscreen here cannot clearly see the headlights of the oncoming traffic. But so far the ID3 is actually doing much better in this respect than most other vehicles. You see, I haven't been flashed one so far and there's a lot of lorries with their cabins and drivers high up going in the other direction. I hope this comes across well on camera, you have to appreciate it. it's very difficult to capture this digitally to replicate what exactly I'm seeing with my own eyes, but I can definitely see that for example now the left side, so essentially the hard shoulder is illuminated using the high beam. And an extra proof for you that something is actually happening is that if you look at the instrument cluster, if the automated high beam symbol is in grey, that simply means that it's in standby mode, ready to fire up, but in blue like it is now, even with the street lights on, it means that at least a section of the high beam is active. And it's actually quite impressive that it can stay on even in these challenging lighting conditions because you have to keep in mind the reason why most manufacturers only enable the full functionality when it's completely dark outside and there's no street lighting is because there's more contrast between the lights of the vehicles on the road and the actual environment. So the onboard camera has an easier time understanding how to shape the beam without dazzling other drivers. But let's be honest, you probably don't care about motorways. You want to see how the system performs on some narrow British country roads where you actually need maximum illumination. So automated high beam on, the curtain opens up. You've got this lovely animation as the high beam comes on and we will see how the system does now. Even as I come into this village at 30 miles per hour, once the high beam is activated, it stays happy, even at these kind of 25 mile per hour speeds, which is great because some of these automated systems have a very high activation threshold. But obviously, if you're driving somewhere where it's completely pitch black, you still want to have maximum possible illumination. Even as the vehicle was turning ahead, the camera did a good job of detecting it and cutting it out from the beam so the driver was not dazzled and now we get onto this slightly faster more bendy sections you see as i turn the wheel the beam literally follows the curvature of the road so i can see where i'm going the spread is also great the uniformity is not quite perfect i can still see a little small ridge in between the kind of dipped beam and high beam section but it's not too bad it's definitely not distracting and on these single track roads it's doing a great job but i'm now going to join some of these more major busier roads so we can see the matrix in action so interestingly even though that car is just over the hill crest and very very far away it was blocked out and now as we come through here again nicely blocked out so what the ID3 is doing is that it's illuminating both sides so if there's some, for example some wildlife hiding in the bushes I've got a greater chance of spotting the animals early but it's nicely blocking out the section of the beam which would dazzle the oncoming traffic and as the cars on the right pass that right section of the forest is illuminated as well. By the way, I'm driving completely on adaptive cruise control at the moment. It's a very competent system and it's automatically adjusting to the speed limits. So if you want to learn more about it, I've already covered it on the channel and I will leave that video linked in the top right hand corner. That Kia Niro was perfectly cut out once again. And as they pass, the full beam is re-established. And 60 mile per hour sign detected, so we're accelerating to the national speed limit. The ID3 is definitely German in a sense that it's sending it through these corners, but the suspension is handling it beautifully. It's one of the massive plus points of the ID3, how just stable and rock solid it feels. Oncoming car detected, beam blanked out, and beam re-established and it's reacting so quickly, literally the moment the car appears, even in these bends, which are quite tight, the camera seems to be wide angle enough to catch them and just detect them immediately. And I hope it's clear that it's not just oncoming vehicles which are detected, but also preceding. So just the taillights are enough for the camera to understand what's happening ahead, and it will create a tunnel in that section of the beam, not to blind the driver of the vehicle directly ahead of me, 
but I still have fantastic visibility past the sides of that car even if they don't have their high beams on. And all of this is happening very quickly, so even if you're on these twisty roads where the position of your car relative to other traffic changes all the time, the lights react so quickly that it's imperceivable to the other road users. I will head back now. I hope that served as a good example about being back on the motorway again. This is the M11 quite far out of London. So it is pitch dark, but even with this many vehicles detected and light sources, some other systems just give up and go into dip B mode. The ID3 is still illuminating the hard shoulder and the kind of bushes on the side there for me. So super well done. I'm impressed. I also tried out the system in many different weather conditions. It doesn't get too worried even when it's raining and the roads are glossy. It really is an example of how a system should work. I'm not saying it's 100% perfect. None of these things are. But as you can see, even kind of lorries are detected properly. And during the course of this test, I haven't been flashed at once. So that just proves the point about how accurate, reliable and dependable this system is. By the way, even we are going so in-depth in this video and if you're in a scenario where the system is not working properly, at any point, once the high beam is on and you want it off, you can just pull the high beam stalk towards you and you go back to just having your regular low beams. The good news is, is that the system is really customizable so you can adjust the behavior to suit your needs and preferences. All you need to do is in the main menu go into the vehicle app and under the vehicle tab in the exterior right on page one of the settings you can jump into comfort light. Comfort light is basically the functionality you get before jumping into the vehicle and starting driving. So starting from the top the lighting animation is on by default. I left all settings in the default setup. I haven't really needed to touch any of the settings really. This means that when you unlock the vehicle, the projectors in the lights will swivel left and right and it appears as if the car was looking around. It's a very cute thing but admittedly pointless so if you don't like it you can always turn it off and the lights will just turn on and stay static. The exit and entry lighting duration is self-explanatory and you can go up to half a minute or down to completely off. I will leave it on 10 seconds. This was quite convenient. If you're not familiar, it basically means when you get out of the car or when you unlock the car, the lights stay on for a while to illuminate the immediate area around the vehicle. So you don't, for example, step into a puddle. Moving forward, switch on when approached is a toggle function. By default, it's on. And this is one of the toggles which you actually may need to switch off if you live in a house with the driveway very close to your house. Basically, if the vehicle detects that you are approaching with the key fob on you, and this is long before you touch the door handle or anything like that, the light will gently illuminate. It's a very cool feature, but it can attract a lot of unwanted attention. So if you want to make sure that the lights don't come on unless you physically press any of the buttons on the fob or on the door handle, you can switch this off. But I live in a flat, so this is not a concern for me at all. And you can also customize the animation for the tail lights. Again, between completely off, which means the tail lights just burn a static graphic, or you've got the difference between the one and the two, where the X kind of builds up and the Xs are the brake lights on these upgraded models. And lastly, the infamous turn signals. A lot of people hate them. I think it looks quite classy, but if you want to just have a static turn signal, you can switch that into classic. The front ones are always static, it's just the rear ones which have the scrolling animation in them. And we are not done with the settings yet. If we go back out of comfort light, we move into the headlights section, which is separate. And this is where you can customize the driving aspects of the headlights, arguably the more important functionality. Firstly, dynamic light assist is the matrix functionality with the automatic high beam. So if you don't like how it's performing, you can turn it off. And now if I go into high beam, I go straight away into forced high beam and then again pull the stalk towards me to turn the high beam off. Standard old school stuff, but I like how it performs. So I'm definitely leaving that on. Likewise, the dynamic cornering light is the illumination of the corners when maneuvering. Nice feature. Next up, you can customize exactly when the automatic dipped beam turns on. So again, one of those things where people complain about having these touch capacitive buttons for the lights, but with the auto mode being this customizable, where you can choose 
how early or late you prefer the lights to come on, you can just leave them in auto and forget about them. You will never have to touch the manual controls. Likewise, important for Europe and actually everywhere, it's just, it is a legal requirement in Europe, is that you can enable or disable the headlights coming on automatically when rain is detected on the windscreen. And the convenience turn signal is also self-explanatory. It means that when you put the turn signal into the first detent position, you will get three flashes of the turn signal. If you disable the setting, you just get a single flash. And lastly, the travel mode, which adjusts the beam of the headlight slightly to not dazzle oncoming drivers when you, for example, go into mainland Europe. So by default, obviously, in the UK, we are driving on the left. But if you want to go into Europe, you will just switch that to driving on the right. This may actually happen automatically based on the GPS data, but I will just double check. I've never actually taken this car across onto the continent. But it's important to mention, if I go into drive now, the headlights will self-level and you will see driving on the right or driving on the left, there is practically no noticeable difference. There's still that upward kink towards the left side, which in our case would be the curb side or the hard shoulder side. And that doesn't change over to the right, even on these quite advanced matrix lights. Okay, that was a lot of stuff. So I hope you found the information you were looking for. If you appreciate the effort which went into making of this video, make sure to hit the like button. But let's now try to conclude with some consumer buying advice. In my opinion, you are getting a lot of features bundled in with these upgraded headlights. And not only that, the most important factor is how they perform. And I'm glad to report, as you saw, they are about as perfect as it gets in real world conditions. And that's something you can't really put on a spec sheet, but makes a huge difference when you live with the car day in, day out. The next question is then, should you spend the extra money on the trim levels with these upgraded lights? And the answer, as with anything, is it depends. It really depends on how you are planning to use the car and how much you appreciate these gadgets. Realistically, even the standard lights are quite good and they are similar on the Cupra Born and the Base ID4, etc. So if you mostly drive around town with street lighting, you will never see the matrix functionality kick in. However, if you're like me and you like driving at night or you live somewhere deep in the countryside, with a lot of twisty roads and you have to rely purely on your car's headlights, then it makes a massive difference, particularly when you are following other traffic. And it means you can be almost as comfortable as driving during the daytime without dazzling all the other drivers. Combine that with the fact which I mentioned in the beginning of the video, that these lights are available across a lot of trim levels in the lineup, even if you're buying used, it's not that difficult to find a car which has them bundled in. So chances are you will not have to compromise on age, mileage or condition just to get the upgraded lights. This is very different on something like, for example, the BMW i3, where yes, it did have matrix lights as an option, but it was a very rarely picked option in the early days. So obviously there's not many of them on the used market. And likewise, even if you're buying new, the lineup has reshuffled many times over the years. But just like before, there are many trim levels where the upgraded lights are bundled in. So long story short, I would want them in my personal vehicle. But I know what you are thinking. You are considering how much would it be to replace them because this seems like a very complex system. And you would be correct because normally modern matrix lights are very, very expensive to replace. And generally speaking, manufacturers only sell you the entire headlight cluster, one for each side, obviously, with no way to individually repair the smaller components inside of them. And the price can easily reach thousands of pounds and that's before and labor to install them. In good news, because this is a VW, it's meant to be a relatively mass market product. And even brand new, they are quite reasonably priced. And I suppose many of these cars have been in various different kinds of accidents. So if you want to go down the used route, there's plenty of headlights available for reasonable prices on the market out there. One disclaimer I do have to say is I don't quite know how the installation works, whether they need to be virginized or coded to the vehicle, which is the case with many of these modern headlights. So you may need to take the car to a VW specialist, but still, this is the case for most modern vehicles, I'm afraid. One genuine reliability concern is that the daytime running lights are starting to fail. So if you look closely, the daytime running light signature on these upgraded lights is formed of these two LED stripes. And quite often, when you look out for ID3s with these upgraded lights, you will see that one of them is dimmer than the other one, which would indicate a failure. Would it pass an MOT like that? I'm not quite sure, given the daytime running light is only half functional, 
but I am fairly certain that if the vehicle is still under manufacturer warranty, VW would replace the cluster free of charge. And yeah, I think this genuinely should be it. Thank you very much if you managed to stay to the end of the video. Leave any questions in the comments below. Subscribe if you want to see more ID3 or EV content in general because there's a lot more stuff coming soon as well. And yeah, thanks again. See you in the next one.